How's it going, Ultra Human family? My name is Rachel, and I am here to help you be your best human. And today, I want to do that by talking about one of the number one tenets of the lifestyle known as essentialism, and that is the art of saying no. I want to talk about you today about why it is so important to say no and some of the ways that we can get to a graceful no. So one way that I kind of think of essentialism is sort of like the philosophical end of minimalism, since you can have very few possessions, but if you're not being minimalist with the way that you approach your time and your commitments and your relationships to things, then you're really not practicing a holistic sense of minimalism. First of all, why is it so important to say no? Isn't it good to say yes? Isn't that how we don't miss out on opportunities? Isn't that a way to make people around us happy and like us just by saying yes to things? Well, all of those things can be true and given the right place and time, those things can really be the case. But in the case of essentialism, we are trying to distill our lives down to the things that are essential. According to the essentialism philosophy, if we pursue a life of many, then we can be average at many things. But if we bring things down to the few things that are very important or essential for our lives and our purpose, then we can be excellent at those few things and we can live a more meaningful and productive life in the sense of the things that really matter. So it's a big deal that no is really a skill. This is not something that we do naturally. If anything, we have been trained from childhood, from our parents, by school, and even really by the social dynamics of the last thousands of years of being a human with small groups that saying no can really be to our detriment. We're worried about disappointing people. We are worried about damaging a relationship with someone. Indeed, saying yes to someone can be a way of creating a bond or doing service to someone. But when we say no, what we're really practicing is understanding that sometimes it's more important to go for respect than popularity. And especially today with so many people and so many connections and so many different kinds of social obligations, if we cannot distill our lives down to saying meaningful and heartfelt yeses and getting rid of everything that's not as some would say a hell yes, take all of those things off the table or else your life is going to be generally overcommitted. We're going to get back into that busy fallacy that we talked about last week and you're not going to be able to find the time to really understand what it is that does matter in your life as long as you're continuing to be overcommitted constantly. I think it makes sense that men are typically better at a hard no than women are. And so I really wanna challenge, especially all the women out there to really examine the things that we're committing to. We really wanna please the people around us. We really wanna make people happy. We feel very, very uncomfortable whenever we feel like we've let someone down and it's okay to put yourself and your priority in life first. That is something that I challenge all the women out there to take a little more seriously. If it's your family, if it's your career, if it's a special passion in your life, if you have projects that you need to get done, whatever it is, stop apologizing for it. Stop beating yourself up over it. You need to make it clear to yourself and the people around you what that is and take the other things off the table. When it comes to the skill of saying no, it's important to note that a hard no is always going to be better than a wishy-washy yes that you don't really mean. And we all know what it's like to have someone tell us, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can get to that. Later on down the road, the thing that you needed isn't getting done, they don't show up, whatever it is, that comes back to it's so uncomfortable to tell someone no. We really want to satisfy people and make them happy. And so telling them some iffy version of a yes makes us at the time feel more comfortable. But in the end, it's really not better for anyone involved. It would have been much better right out of the gate to just say, you know what, I don't think I can make it. 
I don't think I can do that. I'm really overcommitted right now. So finally, I wanna to talk to you guys about how do you differentiate between the things that you already have in your life perhaps, or the things that are coming at us all the time that are what we call the trivial many versus the vital few. Asking these questions is going to help you see through what we call the sunk cost fallacy. And that is just the idea that because we've already put a lot of energy or time or money into something or someone that we need to stick with it, we need to stick it out because we've already put that into it. So for example, if you buy a brand new car and you're making these car payments and six months later you realize that it was a really dumb idea to be putting these car payments on a car that you couldn't really afford and now you think that because the car has lost a bunch of value and you can't resell it for what you bought it for, that it's just worth paying off the car even though it's gonna be another three years of payments or whatever when in reality you are going to lose you're gonna lose out on money but if you write it all the way out to the end you will lose more money than if you just turn around and sold the car as soon as you realize that you had made a bad decision on that and it's much more tangible when you can see it with something that has a defined term and money and numbers but sometimes we don't see these things when we're talking about a bad relationship or a friend that we've really spent a lot of time trying to help and trying to pick up their mood or things like that and if you look at the situation objectively, things just aren't getting better. Knowing what I know now, would I get into this situation again today if the opportunity presented itself? Would I seek out and recommit to a friendship or a romantic relationship with this person again today if I had that opportunity and I wasn't already in that position? These are some really profound questions in terms of if you think about it and you get the answer back, wow, no, I wouldn't, you might have to figure out then how fast, how, in what way am I going to unravel these things out of my life because they're really just sucking your energy at that point. In order to avoid that sunk cost fallacy, you really need to backpedal and get out as soon as you can. If I were starting out today, would I invest what it took to get here now into this person, project, financial obligation, and does that mean that I want to remain in this commitment? So using some of these questions, would I get into this again today knowing what I know now, very different variations of that might kind of help trigger different things for you. I hope that this video today really helped everybody. Perhaps you need to step back and reevaluate the things that you're already committed to. Maybe you just need to be more critical about the opportunities as they come up in your life. And for everybody out there, I really want you to go down into the description. I have some links to Greg McEwen, who is the author of the book Essentialism. He has some really great talks and there's a excerpt from his book Essentialism down below. And I really encourage all of you guys to check that out if you have any thoughts that maybe you need to dive into this subject a little bit more. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I am looking forward to seeing you again next week. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with anybody that you think might be able to benefit from it. And in the meantime, you guys get out there and be your best human, and I will see you next week. Thanks. For time's sake. Bye.